The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. The Equitable Life Assurance Society has more than 8,000 trained representatives from coast to coast, serving nearly 6 million members. Tonight, one of our Equitable Society representatives has a brief message on Social Security. Undoubtedly, you heard of the recent changes in the Social Security law. Maybe you're one of the 10 million who now have Social Security for the first time. Or if you're already covered by Social Security, your benefits have been largely increased. In either case, this is a good time to take stock of your family's financial position. To help you, the Equitable Society has revised its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Listen carefully in 14 minutes when Mr. Keating will tell you what this Equitable chart can do for you. Tonight, FBI file number 289. Its subject, Jailbreak. Its title, The Dark Journey. There may have been a time in America when ordinary citizens could look with unconcern at the nation's crime picture. There may have been such a time, but if there ever was, that time is past. Currently, more than 5,000 major crimes are being committed every day in this country. This is a time for action. Action on the part of every citizen in the daily war against America's army of crime. What kind of action? For one thing, we should get rid of our unconcern and try to cooperate with America's anti-crime army of law enforcement officials. Tonight's file opens as a driving rain pours over an eastern state. In the poor light of early dawn, two men are barely visible. Two men in slate gray uniforms, beaten by the rain and their own fatigue as they stagger toward a dirt road. A road that will take them further and further from the prison they have just shot their way out of. Take it easy, Ox. We didn't fast out to take it easy. Keep going. Ah! Ox! Give me a hand. Okay. My ankle. You still got a good one left. Come on. That's the road. I don't see no car. No, Pete wouldn't have his lights on. Still don't see no car, Ox. Told Pete we made him right by these trees. Uh, maybe he got stuck. Wait a minute. Look there. What? Tire tracks. Yeah. The fresh ones. The car pulled in and parked under the trees, then pulled out again. Well, he's been here and gone. What do we do now? I don't know. Maybe we could use our guns, stop the next car. On this road, you could wait all night. we keep going anyway. Don't follow our prints. We ain't gonna leave him. From here on, we're using that stream. A few hours later, in the warden's office at the prison, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor has just introduced himself to Warden Sterling. What can I do for you, Taylor? Not very much now, I'm afraid. I came over to interview a couple of prisoners that we had detainers on, but, well, I hear they're over the wall. Mason and Hudson? That's right. Yeah. I'd like to interview them myself. (laughs) Well, nobody gave me any details, Warden. All I heard was that they'd escaped. Well, they somehow managed to get guns and killed a guard and went out the side gate. Pardon me, Warden. Yes, Wilcox? Reporting from the state police barracks. They put three cars on the case. Good. Uh, Tell Carson to repeat the teletype on that all-points alarm. Right away, sir. That's the first escape from here in a long time, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, we we had a good record up to this morning. Any leads at all on where they headed, Warden? Not yet. The sheriff's over talking to the other prisoners in that cell block. No. 
Oh, uh, Warden, that mail check that you were keeping on them for us? Oh, nothing came of it. Neither ever mentioned where they hid that loot. You keep a record on where all outgoing mail is sent on. Yes, we're checking everyone either Mason or Hudson wrote to since they got here. Busy, Warden? Oh, uh, come in, Sheriff, come in. This is uh, Agent Taylor of the FBI. How are you, Sheriff? Hello, Taylor. One of the prisoners talked. He was double-crossed by Ox Hudson and left behind. He said they were meeting a car on the river road. What car? Couldn't get a description, but it's driven by a man named Pete Bradley. Well, he just finished serving time here. Well, can we get his record? Right away. Hey, look, uh, you and the sheriff go ahead into the next office. We've set that up as headquarters for the search. All right, Warden. There's a map of the area on the wall, uh, teletype machines and phones. Uh, I'll send Bradley's record in to you just as soon as the file room can get it up here. More coffee, Mother? No. Well, I'll have a touch. Here. Rain seems to be letting up. Uh-huh. I went over the milk accounts this morning. We had a pretty good month. How much? $150 profit. What do you aim to do with it? Well... Trying to make up my mind whether to use it to paint the barn or have the mower repaired. Here. Martha! Paint the barn or get the mower repaired. What's wrong with that? Ain't you ever going to think about something for me? Well, Martha, you know I try to do right by you. Sure. Sure, you take me into the village once a month. Buy me one new dress a year and I'm supposed to be grateful. Well, I ain't. I'm just plain sick of it. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, Sheriff. When was that? I see. No, we haven't. Say what? Around here? Sure will, Sheriff. All right. Goodbye. Sheriff said to watch out for two men escaped from prison. Stole $40,000 last year. Broke out so as they could get it. Look, uh, Marty, I'm sorry you feel the way that you... I don't want to talk about it. You got your chores to do, ain't you? Go on out and do them. How long do we lay here? I'm open a minute. The guy's heading for the house. Look, why don't we just rouse them, huh? Because there must be a car or truck in that barn. If we can get it without him knowing it, we're that much in front. Yeah, he's going in the house. Come on, let's head for the barn. Okay. <coughs> oh, this ankle of mine is killing me. Quit vaping. Let's cut through here. Okay. Is there a door at this end? Yeah, right over there. Come on, move, will you? Well, I'm doing the best I can. I guess this slide's open. Go ahead. All right, all right. Hey, look. Truck back there. Yeah. Well, not if there's only keys in it. Don't move. Huh? Yeah, I knew how this gun works. I've used it before. Look, lady, I think you got us wrong. We just come in here to get out of the rain. You see, our car was stuck up the road. Save your lying. I know what you're doing. You were waiting until my husband went to the house so you could come in here and see if there was a car to steal. Well, why should we do that, lady? Because it'll take you further away from the prison. What? I know who you are. The sheriff called here, told us to watch out for you. What do we do, Ox? Martha! Martha, where are you? I'm in the barn. I'll be one of the early supper. I'll be right up to fix it for you. Why didn't you tell him we were here? 
I got my reasons. You wait here. I'll be back later. Sheriff, one of your deputies just called in. Pete Bradley's been located. Yeah? Where? At the Hotel Central. Did he question him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What'd he say about Mason and Hudson? Well, he admitted that he was in on the escape, so he'd gone out to meet the men and get scared off when he heard the sirens. Did he know where they were heading? Yeah, they were going to dig up that loot they buried from the last job they did. Did Bradley know where it was buried? Well, he claimed he doesn't. They were picked up near here for that job, weren't they, Sheriff? Yes, I was in on the case. They oh. were arrested 11 hours after the robbery. Well, then it's possible that loot is buried someplace quite near here, isn't it? Could be, right around where they were picked up. And you uh, show me on the map where that was, Sheriff? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sure. Oh, here you are. Let's see. They were picked up right here. Uh -huh. Where are the roadblocks? Well, there's one here. Yeah. Here. Here. Mm. One over here. Yeah, well, then, if they're going to pick up that loot, they've got to attempt to go through one of them. You see who that is? It's the dame. We're over here, lady. Here's something to eat. Oh, lady, I thought I was never going to see food again. Hey, leave some for me, will you? Oh, how was you? Hmm. There's water in this jug. Swam. Go me this way, will you? Here. Tell me something, lady. Why ain't you turning us in? I got a reason. Like what? Like me being better off if you stay free. I don't get it. When the sheriff called us about you, he said you stole $40,000 last year. Said you broke out so you could go get that money. So? There's roadblocks set up all over the county. If you're going to get to it, you're going to need help. If you get help, you're going to pay for it. Uh, try to make a deal, lady? Trying to get some money. If I get you through the roadblocks, how much would it be worth to you? How will you get us through? I'll tell you that when you answer my question. We'd uh, give you five grand. Five thousand dollars? That's right. Now, how do you get us through? That truck back there is a milk truck. My husband drives it tonight to the dairy. It's full of milk now. You fellas drain it out and climb into the tank. Huh? You mean inside that thing? That's right. Your husband in on this? No. But I'll be riding with him. I'll see that you get where you want to go. Now, where do we drive to? You head down Route 11 till you come to the diner. The next right turns a dirt rod. You're taking a half mile, you come to a cabin. That's where you're going? That's where we're going. Then start draining the milk from the tank. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now, a special announcement to fathers and mothers from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. The Equitable Society's famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers has just been completely revised to take into account the increased benefits of the new Social Security law. Remember, people previously covered by Social Security now receive increased benefits. An estimated 10 million more people are now covered by Social Security benefits for the first time. So this revised fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers couldn't be more timely. What you do when you get this chart is very simple. You imagine that the regular income of your family has been suddenly cut off. What happens then? The children are still young, so your wife can't go to work. What monthly income will be required to keep your family from breaking up? How much will they need to live decently? The fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers will give you a reliable and accurate answer. 
how many additional dollars will they need to be well-fed, well-housed, well-clothed until the youngest child finishes high school? In five minutes, the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers gives you an answer you can trust. Guides you every step of the way with simple, easy-to-understand pictures. Once you have the facts, you can plan intelligently. Chances are that with your present life insurance and your new Social Security benefits, only a small amount of additional life insurance will give your family complete security. Your equitable representative will be glad to work out a sound program. In any event, ask him for a copy of the revised fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. No charge, of course. So get in touch with your equitable representative or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Dark Journey. You may be asking how tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation concerns you. The answer is simple. Every crime, wherever it happens to be committed, is of vital interest to every person in the nation. It is therefore of equally vital interest to every person in the nation that all of us cooperate in cutting down the number of successful crimes. Obviously, the farmer's wife in tonight's story is an unstable individual of whom we perhaps should not expect too much. But unfortunately, despite her instability, she is all too typical of too many citizens who are not only unconcerned with the crime picture, but even at times condone it. That is why this case was selected from the FBI files. Tonight's file continues at the state prison. Taylor, we may have gotten a break. What's that? One of my deputies just reported he traced the footprints of Mason and Hudson from the river road to the stream. Is he sure it's their prints? Positive. No mistaking prison shoes. Well, let's take another look at that map, huh? How oh, about where did he find the prints, sir? In through here. Oh, that's the river road where Pete Bradley was supposed to wait for them, isn't it? Right. Now, uh, here's the stream. Just beyond the woods, huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. And the only thing upstream from there are uh, the mountains up here, huh? Just about. Sheriff, anybody live up in those hills? Well, not during the winter. My men have checked a few cabins, and there's no sign of them up through there. Yeah? How about down here, this uh, downstream section? Well, that's not too populated either. Mostly those farms we called. Well, I'd say that's the way they'd head once they hit the stream, though. Come on, Sheriff, let's put on a house-to-house search. This is a great arrangement. Wish I was back in a nice, comfortable cell. Anytime you want, I'll just lift that lid. <laughs> this is what milk goes through all the time? Yeah, it suffers. Man, we're slowing down. Maybe it's a roadblock. Uh, we ain't gone far enough yet. Ah, it's a hill. But you'd like to know where we are. And the dame knows the way. As long as we're moving, we're getting closer to that 40 G's. 35, you mean? I mean 40. The dame gets five. I got a big P.S. for you, kid. The dame gets nothing. Where's the next farm, Sheriff? Just around the bend. Oh. How many have we got to go? About a half a dozen. Well, if we still get no lead, maybe Deputy we Deputy Brown to... calling Sheriff Jordan. I'll get it, Sheriff. Brown, this is Taylor. Have you got anything? The Mason and Hudson were seen over here near the Adams farm. When? Oh, a couple of hours ago. Well, how come Adams didn't report that when we called? He's been out in the pasture all day. First he heard of the alarm was ten minutes ago. Which way were Mason and Hudson heading? Toward town. Can I have that, Taylor? Yeah. There you are. Bill? Yes, Sheriff? Get hold of McLaughlin, Kramer, and Reddick. Start working your way towards town. Just forget about the other territory. You joining us? No. There aren't many farms left. You four can handle them. Call me if you find anything. Pretty night, ain't it, Martha? 
Uh-huh. Oh, I like the look of things after a rain. Everything so... Uh-oh. What? See, some folks are in for trouble. What do you mean? Hey, you see those little red flags on the gas pumps we just passed? There's a couple more on the diner up ahead. Means there's a weighing crew up the road. A what? A weighing crew. The fellows work for the state. They weigh every truck so they can pick up the overloads. They going to be weighing this one? Sure. Well, I got nothing to worry about. Even with a full tank, I'm always under the limit. You tell them you got a full tank? Sure. Then they're going to think you're lying. What do you mean? Tank is empty. What? I filled it. You filled it. And it was drained. Drained? Why? There's two men riding back there. Two men who escaped from the prison. Martha. I put them there. What? I put them there so they could get through the roadblocks. Now, just a minute. You mean you're helping two criminals to escape? That's right. Martha, what's got into you? I'm getting paid for doing it. I'm getting $5,000. Well, that don't make any difference. $5,000 don't make any difference? No, these men are wanted by the law. The law ain't going to get them. Now, look, Martha, I'm telling you right now that... Tom, you're making me say this. That money means a lot to me. It means so much that I got a gun here on the seat beside me. And if you say anything to anybody about them men being back there, so help me, I'll use the gun on you. Sheriff, sure. man back at the scale says they've been stationed here for over two hours. Nothing suspicious going by? No, not yet. I gave him full descriptions. Good. Oh, I borrowed the uh, scale master's record sheet. Thought you might take a look and see if there are any strange trucks on the list. Well, I wouldn't know all of them at this end of the county. Mm -hmm. Deputy Brown to Sheriff Jordan. Yes, Bill? We've traced Mason and Hudson as far as Tom King's farm, but uh, they're not here now. Tom around? No. He and his business pulled out a while ago with a load of milk. That dairy Tom deals with. It's uh, that one in Rockport, isn't it? That's right. Hold it a minute, Bill. Taylor, look at that sheet. See if Tom King's gone by here. Tom King, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he has in his truck. Hey, wait a minute. Sheriff, can we call that roadblock up ahead? No. They got no two-way hookup. Well, then we better see how fast we can get up there. in the truck. Yeah, they're talking about us. You mean it? Get your gun out. We in trouble? I don't think so, but let's not take any chances. If anybody opens that lid, start shooting. Nobody's talking now. Uh-uh. Think they made us? I told you, I don't know. Huh? <sighs> that says we're clear. There's a cabin. Pull up in front of us. Martha, what you're doing is all wrong. That's for me to judge. Stop, right here. Look, Martha, I want you to know one thing. That gun had nothing to do with why I kept quiet. But can't I talk to you now? Can't I make you see how wrong you are? My mind's made up, Tom. Open the lid. Let them fellas out. Do like I say. All right. 
right in there. You can come out. I'll give you a boot now. Yeah. Oh, there's Hank. Mobile. All right. Ah, there's the cabin. Looks familiar, huh? Yeah. This your husband, lady? Yeah. Now, where's the money? Turn around, both of you. Huh? This gun says turn around. Start walking toward the cabin. What are you doing? What, what about the money? Just walk, lady. Do like he says, Martha. But the money, the $5,000. Come on, come on. No! Man. He has a gun. I don't care. You should, lady, because I'll use Stop it. Stop it, lady. Stop behind you. They're both covered. Now drop your gun. Go on. Better. All right, Sheriff. Get them. Right. Now let's drive them all back to headquarters. <laughs> Frank Hudson, nicknamed Ox, and Al Mason were both tried and convicted to serve life terms for the murder of the prison guard. Martha King was tried in state court and given two years' suspended sentence for harboring a fugitive. Special Agent Taylor and Sheriff Jordan apprehended the escaped convicts because in looking at the scalemaster's sheet of weights, Agent Taylor saw that Tom King's milk truck weighed much less than the other tank trucks. He knew that meant King was driving with an empty tank which could be the hiding place of the hunted men. The two law enforcement officers sped to the roadblock in time to reach it before Tom King got there to allow the truck to pass with only a perfunctory search, to follow it at a discreet distance, and finally, to perform their double function of recovering the stolen money and arresting the criminals. And thus, once more, cooperation between the Federal Bureau of Investigation and a local law enforcement agency helped close a file. Helped close it successfully. In just a moment, you will hear about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, another quick message from our Equitable Society representative on the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Folks, don't think you're obligated by asking one of us equitable representatives for a copy of this helpful chart. Any one of us will be glad to bring you a free copy of the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers, revised to fit the recent changes in Social Security. Why not phone soon? Or send a postcard care of this radio station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. File number 290. Its subject, car theft. Its title, The International Heist. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Walter Catlett, Ted DeCorsia, Tony Hughes, Jeanette Nolan, Victor Rodman, and Tom Tully. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The International Heist on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next.